Hi, I am Jennifer Purcell, and welcome to my podcast, Living with an Invisible Learning Challenge, where we will discuss, discover, and learn more about the challenges and triumphs of those with NLD and other learning challenges. I do have a website for this podcast, and it is called livingwithnld.com. I also have a Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter account for the podcast. They are all under the same name, which is Living with NLD. I also have a YouTube channel for the podcast, which can be found by Googling the title of the podcast, which is Living with an Invisible Learning Challenge. I would like to tell you about a nonprofit that I use for my research for this podcast. It is called The NBLD Project, and I use their blog for my research. They are a nonprofit that is based in New York and is trying to get NVLD back on the DSM, and they provide many resources for people with NVLD on their website. I'll provide you with the website for them in the podcast description. All proceeds from the ads on this podcast will be donated towards the NVLD project. Please feel free to explore the other topics on the podcast, and hopefully you will learn something new from them. I hope you enjoy today's episodes. Good morning, and I hope that all of you had a wonderful Thanksgiving yesterday and will have a good Black Friday today if you celebrate that holiday and go out shopping with your family and friends. And today's episode is going to be about NLD making big life decisions, changes, and living with regrets. Have you ever had to make a big life decision and didn't know how to make it? Have you ever regretted the decisions you made in your past or felt like there was too much change going on in your life for you to handle? I have been wrestling with a personal decision for months now that involves my traumatic past I haven't come to a conclusion on it yet. I am working on this with my therapist and thought I would share with you what the progress has been like for me. Maybe it'll help you or someone you know who is in the same situation. So for me, I've been trying to decide if I want to go to a family event that would involve me seeing people, hearing voices of people and dealing with triggers from my traumatic past, which Luckily for me, I have plenty of time to choose for this because the event isn't until next year. Um, For me, one of the ways I try to work through decisions and the, for me, it's more the indecision with this one and going back and forth. Do I want to go or do I not want to go? I try to listen to music to help me process my feelings. So Some of the songs I want to share with you are Brave Girl by Calista Clark. I think that's how you say her name. Invisible by Hunter Hayes. Beloved by Jordan Felice. Unbreakable by Kelly Clarkson and Janelle Moha. And now by Mallory Hope are our songs that I would like to share with you. Because... Brave Girl by Calista Clark is about a brave girl who had the courage to do the unthinkable. I was that brave girl when I disclosed to my family about the sexual abuse. I was that brave girl when I started therapy, even though I didn't see the benefit until I was in it for about a year. I was also brave when I went back to therapy after discovering that I wasn't the only one in my family he had done it too. And when I decided to press charges, I was that brave girl with my breakup con artist aftermath and with this decision as also. I'm just trying to reference uh, what that song means to me and some examples. Um, Visible by Hunter Hayes is about realizing the pain, hurt, and sorrow you feel from the past and that it will be gone someday, but that day may not be today. This reminds me of the letting go I went through 
with the family drama that came after the disclosure and therapy breakup and con artist experiences as well. I also had to go let go when I realized that my extended family dynamics and relationships were never going to go back to the close knit that we had. I'm at peace with that now and have been for a while. Beloved by Jordan Felice is about feeling the love from not only others around you, but also from yourself and realizing it was also always there. This song helped me when I was in college and was missing my parents and dog truffles. Yes, I had my brother with me, which helped a lot. I was trying to feel my parents and dogs love from afar, which wasn't easy. I don't have that challenge now because we all live in the same city. And another song that I just thought that I really have been listening to recently really like um, is Love Myself by Andy Grammer. And for me, that one is also similar to Beloved because it's about accepting yourself and trying to love yourself for who you really are without having to hear it from somebody else. And, um, about having a conversation with yourself about why you love yourself and realizing that life has many ups and downs in it and that you can love yourself along the journey, no matter what happens. And the next song is Unbreakable by Kelly Clarkson, which is a song that I use to help remind myself that I have been through so much in life and can continue on this journey of the highs and lows of life more and longer than I think I can. God or spirit does give you the life that it thinks you can handle, even if you would disagree with it at times. And now by Mallory Hope is about the path you were on changing and feeling like no one is there to support you. But then you realize that your loved ones, friends and spirit are there with you on that path. And they were always there. And this on helps me when I need to be gentle with myself through the challenges and decisions that I need to take time to make. It also helps me realize that I have all the time and support that I need to make them. And ultimately this decision to make is mine. No one else's that might not always be true, but it is with this case. I've been using the wise mind strategy to get through my triggers and widen the comfort zone that has that I have in tolerating them so that I can eventually accept them and don't notice them at all. This model is displayed in a link that I'll uh, put in the podcast description for you. It shows that we have three minds, the emotional reason or rational and the wise one. We usually respond to situations or triggers from only the emotional or reasonable slash rational mind, meaning that we let our emotions control our response or we let the reasons and rationale respond to it. But when we respond from the wise mind, we use self-awareness, self-acceptance, and positive self-talk to remind ourselves that we don't have to let our emotions, reasons, or rationale control our decisions all the time. We can use our wisdom, intuition, and intuitiveness to remind us of the past experiences we've been through and realize we're okay now, we can use those times to help us through this journey, through the current difficult experiences we have. I would like to share this article with you that is titled The Bravery Paradox, Society and Hidden Disabilities by Nathan Extra stand written on August 17th in 2023. <clears throat> Quote, 
I know Johnny's frustration, but I can also avoid it. As my disability epilepsy is hidden, I receive society's message to the disabled, am held back by society's ableism and wrestle with tasks others take for granted. Yet no one volunteers condescending messages and bravery, and my condition is not the face of disability on the one hand, this has advantages. I don't worry about the stereotypes influencing people's interactions with me or being discriminated against because of how I look or sound. Most people I encounter outside my home don't know I have a disability even after lengthy conversations. Unless I have a seizure, I get to choose how and when people learn of my condition. This has its drawbacks. A more subtle form of discrimination operates on me when, per, sorry, which perhaps is not as harsh, but leads to both disenfranchisement and feelings of resentment. The invisibility of my disability leads to a barrage of in, in, inquisitions, check ins, and evaluations designed to confirm the specific nature of my disability, not just for my health, but for jobs, relationships, and other social roles. I receive two messages, one telling me, like Johnny, that I am brave for existing, the other questioning whether I deserve disability accommodations. This contradiction of being held to both a high and a low bar at the same time, I call the bravery paradox." Close quote. So for me, I can definitely relate to that article and quote from Nathan because I feel like I have many invisible conditions and learning differences that I um, cope with and sometimes struggle to cope with, sometimes cope with very well. Um, one being chronic migraines and one being NLD and another being PTSD. Um, but I think for me, some of the, uh, some of the challenges that I run into, like, uh, Nathan was saying that a lot of people don't see what I go through because it is invisible. And, um, it is so hard to describe sometimes unless you really know me and know the challenges that I've had. Um, it could be hard to describe to somebody else <laughs> what it's like to have them and what it's like to be in my life and what it was like in college before the accommodations. And then even when I had the accommodations, that didn't make it be a piece of cake, but it did make it be a lot easier in some ways. Um, the second article is titled tough to talk about sexual assault and Explo exploitation as it impacts the neurodiversity community written in April of 2021. Neurodiverse young adults have a variety of differences that can make them more vulnerable to sexual assault and exploitation. Difficulty negotiating social cues, a strong desire to be accepted, and a propensity to be tr too trusting. Additionally, neurodiverse young people tend to have had less education around sexual health and less exposure to the ins and outs of the peers' dating culture. This leaves some young people vulnerable to sexual assault and exploitation and on occasion leaves them vulnerable to unknowingly violating se sexual ethics. Neurodivergent teens and young adults are seemingly particularly at risk for unwanted sexual attention. 70% of adults with ASC reported experience in some, uh, some form of sexual victimization after age 14 and into adulthood compared to 40% of those without ASC. It's not just at college or out in the physical world where we need to train young adult 
the young people to be vigilant. Social media has opened up avenues for unintentional stalking, online exploitation through catfishing or bullying and grooming that can reach your young people 24 hours a day. Your neurodiverse survivors will need treatment after care that takes their sensory and to- cognitive differences into account. And I was looking up what ASC is, it's autism spectrum conditions. I didn't know what that meant and I wanted to let you guys know what that meant. So for me, this article definitely resonates with me even though I don't have autism, I have NLD. Um, It's still, they're still similar in some situations with the social piece in terms of not being able to understand or comprehend social cues and body language and um, nonverbal cues. So it definitely, and because we're more naive and too trusting, like the article said, or have, um, we tend to lean that way more. Um, I would say that it does make us more vulnerable, but I would say that with the right education, not only for neurodivergence, but also for neurotypicals on um, our tendencies. Maybe we can do some changing and make it easier for both sides um, to make those cases not so prevalent. The third article I want to share is titled Your regret won't change the past. These tips may save your future. Quote, we can't change the past, but we can learn how to accept, forgive, pivot, and change our responses to past mistakes or missed opportunities that spark massive ADHD, regret, and shame. Here's how by Sharon Celine, who has a degree in psychology. And this is updated uh, in last year in June. Quote, regret is tough to pinpoint. It may feel like sadness, remorse, or disappointment. It may emerge following a missed professional opportunity, oversharing at a cocktail party, or yelling at our child for spilling their orange juice. All humans feel regret, but people with ADHD may feel regret more often and more strongly due to struggles with impulse control, emotional regulation, and other executive functioning skills. We regret both the things we did and the ones we we wish we had done. For example, I regret how dysregulated I was going through menopause. There were times when I absolutely did not handle myself well. Once I lost my temper because my daughter wasn't wearing a warm enough coat before going to the first night festivities on a frigid New Year's Eve. Another time I stormed off when my son asked me to help for studying a history test and then repeatedly criticized the questions I asked him. Honestly, it's hard to remember these moments and practice self-compassion and forgiveness. I just want to shake my younger self and shriek, what were you thinking? I dearly wish I made other choices. But here's the truth. No matter how much we want to, we can't go back in time and change our past. But we can learn how to accept, forgive, pivot, and change ourselves to create better times in our present and our future lives. So for me, I definitely can relate to um, what... Um, Sharon is sharing there. For me, um, there have been times where I would want to go back and change how 
um, a experience or decision that I made went and carry through. But when I do think about changing it, I'm like, would that really have helped me learn and become who I am today if I did change it? Not as much. So um, I think everything happens for a reason, even if you don't know what the reason is right after it happens. That's what I have found um, to be very true for me. And um, I would imagine some of you have found that true as well. All right, the last article is titled Seven Tips to Help You in Decision Making Process. <clears throat> All right, quote Ask yourself the right question, but for a potentially life changing decision, dig deeper can, digging deeper can be helpful. Levy recommends asking yourself the following when trying to make a big decision What are my options? What are the pros and cons of each outcome of this decision? How can I handle each outcome? How can I cope if the decision backfires? What am I giving up by making this decision? Will this decision impact my psychological well-being? How will this decision impact the people around me? What if I fail? What if I succeed? Make time for quick, quiet reflection. Unless you're in a position or profession that involves life and death, immediate decision making, such as a nurse or ER doctor, you probably have time to make your big decision. The hustle and bustle of life can sometimes make it harder to focus and reflect. Write down a list of pros and cons. If you're feeling overwhelmed by a choice in front of you, writing things down can also help you make sense of your options. Get used to the idea of failure. One of the scariest parts of making decisions is knowing there's a possibility of making the wrong choice, which can feel like a failure. Give yourself a deadline. Setting a deadline is one way to encourage yourself to bite the bullet and make a decision. It can be a helpful way to avoid decision paralysis, says Levy. By setting a deadline, it helps us move forward and instead of staying stuck in fear of making the, in quotes, wrong decision. Also ask for support. You might think asking for help make, by making a decision is a cop-out. In reality, leaning on a solid support network can be invaluable when you're finding it tough to decide on something big. Trust your gut. It may sound like a hookah pocus. <laughs> But your gut can help when making tough decisions. As a clinical psychologist, I am a stronger believer and every person is capable of knowing what feels right for them. It may take time to trust yourself, but it is not impossible, explains Levy. Boost your confidence. Levy explains that evidence shows trusted source that being more confident in your decision making can positively impact your self esteem and psychological well being. In turn, this can be a benefit for your overall mental health. Takeaway if you're trouble making decisions, you're not alone. Even the most confident, self assured people can experience decision paralysis. End quote. So for me, I think those tips are really well, really. Sorry, got tongue tied really good. And I have been using them as well. And um, I think definitely listing the pros and cons are good. And maybe doing that more than once because as you go over it, you might come up with more pros and cons than you did the first time. And um, something that it didn't list that I've used before, and I think I've mentioned it before. Um, imagine you're writing a fake letter to yourself, your future self, or to whomever you're trying to deal with emotions and triggers. 
And by fake letter, I mean, you never send it. You just write it and get all your emotions and feelings out um, about the situation. I've done that a lot and that does help me. Um, and sometimes I, I tend to type it because I can't read my own handwriting very well. And I don't like writing with a pencil or pen. So I just type it, but that still helps me, um, get it out. Or you can do voice to text and I've also done that and that is helpful. So I hope that this episode helped you, even though it might've been a little difficult to hear some of the things I was talking about. I hope that the topic helped you and that you were able to get some thing out of it. Um, as always, I will provide you the links to the articles that I quote. That way you can read them more if you want to. I also want to take time to let you know that this podcast is sponsored by Spotify. And if you would like to support this podcast and keep it going, you can donate through Spotify or you can donate through Patreon, which is also a sponsor for podcasts. And on Patreon, I started to put different material up there. For $5, you can get some episodes that don't have any ads to it. And for $10, you can get the same episode along with the transcript for it, at least the link to it uh, that is on my website. And you can listen to the episode while you read along to it. And also BetterHelp sponsors this podcast and BetterHelp is an online therapy program that has helped millions of people get out of um, whatever situation that they may be in that it requires therapy, whether that's depression or anxiety, or maybe they're going through a difficult period with um, being a healing from something in their past that happened. I know for myself, I've been in eight years of therapy um, with a different online program than BetterHelp, but I can speak in general terms that therapy is very effective and can help you change your life around for the better. It certainly has done that for mine. And I provide all the links for these sponsorships in the podcast description if you want to check them out. Thank you. I also want to mention to you that I just launched my podcast swag on Wednesday of this week and have a page for it on my website. And I will also send you the link to it in the podcast description. And I will also send it to you in the newsletter that I usually send on out on Fridays. I am now selling t-shirts, water bottles, and a backpack and they all have the podcast logo and title on it and the tagline. So I am looking forward to watching the sales and seeing who buys them and um, spreading the word more about my podcast. As I wrap up, there are some things I would like to share with you. I do have a website for this podcast. It is called livingwithnld.com. I also have a Facebook and Instagram page for this podcast. It is called Living with NLD. I will include the links for those in the description. In conclusion, I would like to hear from my audience. If you know individuals with NLD that I could interview for this podcast, please email me at livingwithnld at gmail.com. What are you interested in learning about NLD? I know I'm not an expert, but I do know I have the living experience of having it. I would like you to practice journaling about your gifts and differences. Also see if there is a way that you can make that difference become easier for you to do than it originally was. Thank you for listening today, and please go to my YouTube channel and subscribe to it. Thank you. Bye.